One of the most important things you'll learn as a programmer is how to refactor your code. And this isn't something that gets talked about often. So I wanted to do a video showing a real life example of something that I refactored today. Before we take a look at the code and see how I removed 50 method calls per frame, let's take a look at the definition of code refactoring to make sure that you understand what it is and why we're doing it. And it says here, in computer programming and software design, code refactoring is the process of restructuring existing computer code code, changing the factoring without changing its external behavior. And that's the important part. When you're refactoring, you want to be doing a process where you're changing the code and changing the underlying systems, but the end result is exactly the same. So you want to get it into a state where you, you like it or it's good, and then do the refactor. Don't try to change functionality while you're refactoring. It says refactoring is intended to improve the design structure and or implementation of the software or its non-functional attributes. So essentially changing the way that it works underneath without changing what it actually does. It says while, well, exactly, while preserving functionality. Potential advantages of refactoring may include improved code readability. That's one of the key things, being able to write or fix your code up so that it's easy to read and understand and to maintain. If you're finding that you've got some methods and you're looking at it you're like, I can't remember what this does, or I have to step through and look at this every time I want to check it out because it's hard to kind of keep in your head, then it's probably a good candidate for refactoring for code readability. The other thing is for reduced complexity. So if you find that you've got lots of code calling all these other places and things are getting kind of spaghetti-ish, then reducing complexity through a refactor is often kind of a good thing. Sometimes it's a matter of just simplifying stuff. You're just deleting out a bunch of code and going back to a much simpler solution that's maybe not as performant or um, something else. Usually you want to try to get good performance when you're doing the refactors too. But sometimes you've just got to cut out all the complexity, get it to something simple, and then you refactor again to improve the performance. Now it says, these can maintain the source code's maintainability and create a simpler, cleaner, and more expressive internal architecture or object model to improve extensibility. And what it means here really is that you're able to modify your code in the future and add on to it later. One good example of this that I did very recently was taking a whole giant game flow that was in a coroutine. It was in an I enumerator coroutine that was a start method, and it handled the entire game flow for this travel game. And I switched that out to be a state machine. Essentially take the different pieces of it, cut them out, and move them over to the state machine setup instead. Now, like I mentioned before, another potential goal for refactoring is improving performance. Performance. And you usually will do a performance refactor after you've done some profiling and seen that there's an issue. And that's one of the ones that we're going to take a look at today is an actual performance. Well, it's a performance and a cleanup refactor. So it says typically refactoring applies a series of standardized basic micro refactorings, which is usually a tiny change in the computer source code that either preserves the behavior or at least doesn't modify the conformance to functional requirements. All it's saying here is that usually when you're doing the refactoring, we're doing one piece at a time and then continuing on. It's best in my experience if you can modify your code a little bit, have it continue working, then modify your code a little bit more, have it continue working and continue that pack or that process instead of doing a cut where you've got everything broken and you're trying to refactor, change everything and it maybe takes you a couple hours or a couple days before things are compiling and working again. I prefer the smaller method. Things just tend to work better. You end up with less problems and a much cleaner refactor. All right, let's dive into the practical example now. This is my simple travel agent game. You buy a ship and then you select destinations that you want to travel to and wait for passengers to buy tickets, set, you know, grab some fuel and then start off your trip. And there were a couple of things in this project that I kind of slapped together when I was first creating it. In fact, you can go watch the streams and see when I first created it. The first thing that I put in there was my main game flow. And I did that all through a game manager using a coroutine. And like I said earlier, I refactored that out into state machines or into a single state machine by taking each chunk of the code that handled the different states that my game would be in, converting those into 
two separate state classes, and then creating a state machine that calls an on enter behavior and an update or tick behavior every single frame. I made it so that my state machines have a timeout or a timer for how often they tick so that I could tick some things once per second and everything else once per frame. And then I added a couple more states and found that now I've got a nice easy to manage state system so I can tell what's going on in different states and bounce between them without things getting messy. That was a bigger refactor though. It took me about an hour and I think it's a little bit complicated to cover. So I've got a much smaller, simpler refactor that I wanna share with you that I think you can probably apply to your own projects very easily. When I was putting this game together, one of the things that I quickly slapped in was these person indicators. It shows a little head for each person that can be on your ship, and then it lights up when a person buys a ticket and gets on and you get some money. Now these were updating through a very simple and naive method. You can see right here that they just check to see if their sibling index is less than the number of tickets sold, and if it is, then they turn white, otherwise they turn gray. So if I've sold one ticket, index zero turns white, otherwise it's gray. If it's no index one, it would be gray. If I sold two tickets and index zero and one would be white and the others would be gray. The other thing it does is it disables the image based on my max occupancy of the ship. So if my max occupancy is greater than the sibling index, we just disable the image. This works great. It's nice and simple and it was very fast to put in, but it does call and update every frame for every single person indicator. And this might might be okay if it was just in that loading scene, but I've also got this in my gameplay scene while we're playing along, and I feel like it's something that should probably be cleaned up. We don't want to be calling update on game objects, especially when we have dozens of them or maybe even up to a hundred of them every single frame. So for my refactor, I thought about doing two things. First, I probably don't wanna have a person indicator script on every single person object here. There's probably not necessarily a need when really I just wanna change the image's color or its uh, visibility. So either I wanna turn it on or off or change it from white to gray. So I can remove all of those person indicators. The other thing I know I wanna do is update this only when the thing actually changes. So if I don't get a new person added to my ship or I haven't got it reset back down to zero people, I don't wanna have this updating every single frame. There's no reason for me to loop through all of these person indicators and do them in a single script. I should only do this when it changes. So here I've written a new script, a people indicator that I'll have one of, and I'm gonna put this at the parent level above all of those person indicators. In its awake method, it finds all of the child images, and then it registers for a new event that I've added to my game events called on ticket sold. Whenever that happens, whenever a ticket is sold, update people is called and it loops through all of my images, so that way I've got all the way to however many images I've got, even beyond my max occupancy. And then it sets the image color based on the number of tickets sold, just like before, and sets the enabled state just like before based on the max occupancy. Now to make this happen, the only change I had to do was add an on tickets sold event. And then of course, remove those other scripts and add this one to the, the parent there. Let's take a look at that on tickets sold. If I hit F12, you see that I've just got a static class called game events with a couple static actions. They're not actually events because then they wouldn't be callable from outside of here. Again, you can come up with a bigger, more powerful messaging system, and that's something that I'll probably refactor this into later. But for now, this system works perfect, and it just kind of handles what we need. The on ticket sold gets called whenever we increment our number of tickets sold here. So we count up our tickets and then call on ticket sold. I feel like these should probably eventually come together, and it should be a, a thing that's changing when the ticket sells, it just calls the event automatically and kind of combine it somewhere. But I haven't decided where to do that yet and that's a future refactor to come. If you've got ideas for what that refactor should look like, drop a comment down below. And if you have questions about refactoring or just thoughts on it in general, drop those down there too. I'm really curious to see where everybody is with the refactoring process, if this is helpful and what kind of things you're running into or questions or problems you might have along the way. So let me know and I'll see you in the next video, bye.